I started off being very interested in primate evolution. Then I got fascinated by extinction. None of the conventional explanations for why species go extinct, either singly or in droves, made much sense to me. That eventually washed me up on the shores of Pleistocene extinctions and the loss of the megabees. All of the large mammals that we think about when we go to the American Museum and see their skeletons, like the mastodons and the mammoths and the saber-toothed cats, they'd all disappeared. And the argument at, uh, at, at the time, at least in the, in the late 60s and 70s, was that this had to have been engineered by big game hunting. It's facile to blame humans, it's easy to do, but if, as a scientific problem, you want much harder evidence. And that has taken me into many other parts of the world trying to find such evidence. The first time I went with the United States Antarctic program was in 2007. Although I've been on many, many expeditions, including ones at high latitude in the northern part of the world, I didn't really comprehend how difficult some things would be. There's still only one place in the Antarctic where mammal fossils are showing up. This is on Seymour Island where the deposits are about 45 million years old. Now it's a very interesting time period in fact in mammalian evolution and what we're finding is fascinating in its own right. We're finding uh, marsupials and we're finding South American mammals. I'm talking about the edentate group composed of sloths, armadillos, and anteaters. These are uniquely South American. They're not like anybody else on the planet. All of which tells us, which we know from geological grounds, that there had to have been some kind of corridor making it possible for mammals to get from South America proper down to the Antarctic. We should expect to find very early ancestors of some typically South American beasties which in the case of the South American record show up very suddenly. The possibility that arises is that the ancestral edentate came into being at a time when it was still possible to travel from Africa to Antarctica. Once in Antarctica, the ancestor differentiated and then when the possibility arose, made it up into South America to suddenly pop into the South American record as the quintessential South American mammal. Now the reason why that is so captivating is because it means that Antarctica itself was a scene of evolutionary differentiation. If you ask most of my colleagues about what Antarctica is good for in that regard, they'd say, well, it might have been a biogeographical highway for things to move here and there. But really nothing happened there, and I, I disagree with that profoundly. It's a big place. The important point in this line of work is to find the fossils, to do the necessary empirical work so that you've got the, so you've got the goods to show, and that's, that's why I'm in it.